What's up you guys? If you guys are new around here, my name is Joey. And I'm Kenzie. And around this time last year, we were actually completing our own van build in our Sprinter. And we have now called that van home for the last year. For the last five months, we've actually been traveling around California. And we've met so many amazing people over there and a lot of people that are really interested in van life and not sure where to get started. And we had been wanting to do another build for a while. Uh, just didn't really make sense to do another one for ourselves quite yet. So, if you guys watched our last video, you guys know that we're back in Arizona and we're actually going to be building this van out for a client. Yeah, we're super excited to get started on another build and we're going to be taking you guys along with the whole process. We never did film when we were doing ours. We didn't actually put a video out until our van was done. Um, but this time you guys are going to see the whole process and you guys will get weekly updates of what we've done. So this is going to be week one, all the fun basic stuff, getting your insulation, your furring, um, wiring, fun stuff like that. Thanks guys for tuning in. We're stoked to get started. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this and we're excited to bring you guys along too. So, <laughs> cue the intro. What's up friends? I just wanted to hop on and uh, show you guys what we've been up to today. Uh, we've been up since about 5.30 this morning, organizing the shop. We made a big Home Depot run. Uh, got a bunch of furring strips, ply, insulation, stuff we needed to, to get all the first steps going on the van. One of the first things we did this morning is we tore up all of the uh, rubber mat subflooring that was in here before. All the, the paneling that was covering the, the wheel well and, and the, uh, the side windows right here. Uh, took up all the steps right back in the back and right here. Uh, got everything out so that we can scrub all of this flooring. It was slightly used, so there was some dirt all underneath everything. So we used some soap and water, scrubbed everything out of here, got all the dirt out. So that was step one, just get everything out, get everything clean, getting ready to start building. But before we start building, we actually need to uh, touch up some of the bare metal that's showing. We don't want any surface rust happening. And so while we're, before we start building, we're actually gonna do some uh, preventative measures. We're gonna throw some uh, Rust-Oleum paint over it just so that there's no surface rust in the future. We just got some uh, white paint and primer uh, for wood, metal, plastic, uh, indoor, outdoor, so this should be good enough to cover up all the uh, bare, bare metal spots underneath the subfloor. <laughs> After we painted all the uh, bare metal spots, we started setting in our subfloor. So we have all of these furring strips basically just laid out on the floor, and they're not down yet. Um, but what these are going to do is, well for one they're going to raise the floor a couple of inches, but basically what we're going to do is set in foam board insulation all along here. And then it's also going to give us a really sturdy platform to put the subfloor on. Um, so that nothing is flexing under your feet. We put them in between these ribs so that it's not really raising the floor all that much. We want it to be super sturdy, especially in this walkway uh, right about here. So there's zero flex and uh, warpage of his actual flooring. So the next task is to actually get these pieces of wood uh, adhered down to the floor. So we're going to be using this stuff right here. It's just a Gorilla heavy duty construction adhesive and that way we don't have to drill into the metal of his floor at all Once this is all dried, uh, we're actually gonna lay down one inch thick insulation uh, foam board uh, But we can't really do that yet because it's still drying while this is drying We're actually gonna cut out the half inch I think it's like an eighth over half inch ply that we're gonna put over the top of everything We actually have a template that we could use so this fan this van came with this rubber, uh, kind of sound deadening floor mat. Uh, so we're gonna flip this over, we're gonna lay all of our boards uh, across it, and then just kind of draw a template around all of these curves, and it should lay right back in, be super easy. In case you guys were wondering what it's like to build outside in Phoenix in August, 
Uh, it sucks, basically. <laughs> um, it's been consistently 110 degrees for the better part of today, and um, we're sweating profusely and taking lots and lots and lots of water breaks. But we are still moving along. We did this last year with our van, and we built through the absolute worst months. I mean, literally May through August we were building. So at least now we only have about a month of this, and then it will start going down. Um, anyway, we got our first piece of subflooring down, just what I'm sitting on here. And then the rest of it, I will have a piece of insulation sitting here. Um, the rest of it, Joey is going to work on cutting out all the notches. And then we've got this... This is one inch uh, foam board for insulation, and so while he is cutting out the rest of those, I'm actually going to start measuring out these little gaps in between our wood strips and start cutting those out and fitting them in between so that his floor has some insulation. late in the day but figured we'd just give you guys an update on where we're at right now. We have these uh, insulation boards down in between all of these wood strips. Um, you can see some of these little gaps here and we're gonna fill those in with spray foam which is basically the same material that these foam boards are made of. It's just made to fill in these gaps here. Uh, Hi. Hi. <laughs> we also have all of the subflooring cut out over here, so it's three different pieces. Um, so basically, as soon as we get this done and fill in all these cracks with the spray foam, we're going to put that subflooring down, screw that into the wood, and then subflooring will be done. Good morning, everybody. It is a new day. Um, we already went on our coffee run today, early this morning, and now we are getting back to it. So, hello. Hey. What's up? Day two. Nice. Um, <laughs> Pretty sure what we did. Yep. So yesterday we laid down our subfloor supports, all the insulation, and then all the spray foam. Yeah, you can uh, see all the spray foam in here. We're just going to have to shave that down level with the floor. Mm -hmm. And then, what else did you do? Uh, I started sound deadening all the walls. So this is just a uh, sound editing material like mat. It's like a layer of aluminum foil, this rubberized Stuff. rubber, <laughs> and then adhesive. So this morning we're gonna finish putting up some of those sound deadening strips all in the van um, to help with road noise. And then we're gonna get our actual subfloors down. Right now, I mean, this is solid as can be. And when we, even just when we dry fitted the subfloor yesterday, it's super solid, not flexing at all, which is exactly what you want because you don't want your floors to be flexing when you're walking on them. So I know we showed you guys when we had the floor supports down and the insulation, um, but now we have the actual subfloor down, but you can see down in here uh, the supports and the insulation, and then we've just put our subfloor on top of that. We've kind of taped out the layout here. Um, and then we started putting a couple furring strips up, but really it's just because we were waiting for uh, wires to show up. So we have that now. Oh, also this insulation we've put in the window cavities and sealed up some cracks with some spray foam. So today we are working on wiring. So right now we're getting all of our 12 volt stuff done. Do you want to explain a little bit? We're going to have an overhead cabinet right here. So one of the doors are going to open and this is going to basically be the central control panel. So we've got all of our wires ran to here. We're going to have the big fuse box uh, and to basically all the switches here to control everything. I know that wiring is definitely one of the more intimidating parts of a build if you're just starting out. Definitely was for us, uh, but once we figured it all out and we learned it, it's really pretty simple. So I'll give you guys a few tips and tricks and just kind of show you the, the gist of what you do to get your wiring all ran. So before you get started wiring, you definitely want to map out where everything is going to be and know what it is that's going to need power. Should we show them the, our notebook? Um, yeah. Kenzie drew up this uh, beautiful wiring diagram. It's got all of our, this is going to be our central control center. It's got all of our switches, fuse boxes, and then every piece of wire ran to all the lights, outlets, USBs, uh, any switches, water pumps, water heaters, anything we need. And then we have a checklist on this side. So when we start running that wire, we label it and we check it off our list. So we keep track of everything. So to keep things pretty simple, uh, typically you're going to have your 12 volt appliances and your 120 volt appliances. Um, and so for most things 12 volt, we use this 16 gauge wire, it's just two strand. 
Um, except for things like the fridge, we do use a bigger uh, wire on that. Do we do 10 gauge on ours? Yep. We run 10 gauge on, on our fridge. You can always find the specs for whatever uh, kind of fridge or appliance you have. They're, they usually come with a manual and they'll tell you what size wire you should be using. Um, but for most things, 16 is fine. That's like for all the lights and fans and what else? USBs. USB outlets, stuff like that. So like we mentioned, we have everything running to a central location. This is where our 12 volt fuse block is gonna be. It's going to be up in a cabinet. Um, so that's why everything is basically ending here. Um, you'll notice that we have everything labeled. And so all these wires you'll see are just kind of ran to generally where things are going to be. And then you definitely want to give yourself some extra wiggle room to work with. Really important when you're running wires is to make sure that everything is safe and protected. So you'll notice we use this uh, plastic flex tubing as well as these rubber grommets anywhere that wire is running through metal. Um, you want to really avoid having any of this wire rubbing up against any bare metal where there might be sharp edges that it could basically eat through this, um, whatchamacallit, Insulate. insulation. Obviously we're not finished here, but this is an example of what you wouldn't want, is for this to just be like sitting on here and rubbing on this, because as you're driving, uh, it, things will vibrate and over time that could eat away at this insulation. Um, so that's why you want to secure everything up away from all that metal. We are on our way to the good old Home Depot for some more supplies. If you're taking on a van build, just be prepared to call Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your local hardware place is. It's gonna be a second home, so just be ready for that. And bonus if you live close to one. Luckily, we, we do. So lucky. It's you're, like, I would say if you're more than like 10 minutes away from one, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say you're coping with this heat? Ooh, uh, not very well right now, but I'm getting <laughs> back in the groove of things, getting used to it again. Drinking like a gallon of water a day. I think that's one of the biggest things that we have to like remember to do is drink so much water. And obviously we've lived here for a long time, so we know that, but being in San Diego for so long, like I didn't realize what a difference it makes to be in this desert. awfully hot, dry, whoa, desert, compared to being by the ocean with a cool like, 75 Ocean degrees breeze. and a breeze. I am kind of missing that right now. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what we got ourselves into. I'm so looking forward to having an indoor shop eventually, but did not make sense to do it right now. Once we got a full blown operation going though, indoor shop all the way. What's up you guys? We are about a week into the van build and we are chugging along. I'll show you the progress that we've done so far. Last time we were talking to you guys, we were in the middle of wiring. Uh, we have finished that so far. So we have all of our 12 volt, all of our switches and all of our 120 ran everywhere, all throughout the van. Uh, we have everything now protected. Uh, any like sharp edges or corners with this wire loom or these rubber grommets. Once we finished all of our wiring, we were able to start on all of our furring strips on this side. Got all of this guy going. And a majority of our insulation in. So right now, within with these uh, window cutouts, we actually have two one inch uh, foam board. And then in all these other little crevices, we have denim insulation. So the reason why we uh, chose to go with the denim insulation is because it is a recycled material. It's non-toxic, so it's not gonna seep any uh, bad stuff out into the cabin. Um, it's breathable and it has about the same R value as this uh, foam board. We are coming to the end of our week and we kind of neglected to show you guys uh, our furring strips and the rest of our wiring. So I'll take you through a little run through of what we've been doing. Uh, so we first started with these horizontal strips that we kind of bolted to the wall of one of these super sturdy. We kind of bolted them? <laughs> uh, really bolted. 
Uh, we bolted these guys to the wall because we wanted these guys super sturdy. There was a line uh, of like a seam where two pieces of metal were overlapping. So we kind of followed that line on both sides and we just kind of went from there because nothing's really square or level in the van. So we're just going with straight lines that were already here and making everything making sure everything is super square. So on this passenger side, we have That's a lot of... Side. So on this driver side, we have a lot of vertical strips. Uh, this side is mostly gonna be shiplap. So we just did lots of vertical because they're gonna be going horizontal across. So there's gonna have lots of uh, points to tie into, gonna be super sturdy. Uh, if you come towards the front of the van, this is gonna be our shower area. Put that over here. Uh, it is going to be tiled, so we wanted this to be super sturdy. So we did two by twos uh, drilled directly into the actual frame on both sides, and then we kind of layered it out to be completely level. This guy is not going anywhere. I can move the actual structure of the van before this is going to move. So this is going to be his seating area. So we wanted where he's going to be leaning up against super sturdy. So we put these guys, uh, just pocket jig them in between here. So when he's leaning back, there's not going to be any flex or feel flimsy at all. That's going to be nice. If you come on the other side, uh, this is going to be the kitchen area. Uh, it is going to be tiled as well. So we put another two by two right here, uh, that we're going to put another cross two more cross beams here so that's not going to flex at all. We finished running all of our wire to our control center. We've got all of our 12 volt, our three strand for all of our switches and all of our communications cables so we can talk to our inverters, batteries, everything that we need. Talk to them. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, down here is where our inverter is going to sit. So we have all of our 120, uh, all of our Romex ran directly to here. All of our Romex uh, ran to this area. We don't know exactly where everything's gonna be going, so we kind of gave everything lots of room. Like we ran it to about the center and then back. So there's gonna be plenty of leftover, so we're not gonna have any to splice anything together. All right, guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of week one. So just to do like a quick overview, basically what we've accomplished this week is putting down floor supports, floor insulation, subfloor. Um, we've insulated the walls. We actually might even put some more insulation in there because um, yeah. we can fit some behind the furring strips. We put furring strips in. Um, we have run all of, wire, all of our wire. 120 switches, yeah. 12 fold. And I think that's about it. And I'm pretty happy with that progress. We definitely did not make that fast of progress with our first <laughs> van. It probably took us like a month to get to this point. We didn't know what we were doing we then. Were yeah. figuring it out and especially yeah. like if you guys are just starting out with a van uh, I know how daunting electrical can be um, and we breezed through it this time but last time we were going so slowly and carefully to make sure that we didn't mess anything up thanks for tuning in guys hopefully somebody got some useful information out of all this uh, if you like what you saw feel free to like comment subscribe it really helps us out and if you guys have anything that you would like us to address in future videos as we're building this van, let us know. I know there's a lot of people out there that are working on their vans right now for the first time. Uh, we're happy to answer questions, so just leave those down below. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you next week.